Good day, listeners, and thank you for joining us on another segment of the show. I am Martha Martha, and I'm right here with Mr. Uchi Ihechiwele, and he is the MD CEO of Trust Fund Pensions Limited. Thank you very much, sir, for being here with us. Pleasure. And thank you so much for granting us this interview. It means a lot to the profession. You're welcome. So, yes, we have been looking at Trust Fund Pensions Limited. And we have seen that it's an organization that has quite a level of integrity and seeing your high level of pedigree. It will be important to let us know what the mission of the organization is, the vision, and what has brought you to this point. Thank you very much. And once more, you're welcome to Trust for Pensions Limited Workers PFA. Um, we are, um, by origin, one of the foremost PFS. As a matter of fact, we are the inheritors of the defunct pension scheme in Nigeria. Uh, because at the inception of this contributory pension scheme, um, the law, that's the Pension Reform Act of 2004, mandated that the assets of the defund scheme should be transferred to the workers' PFA for management. And so um, our mission and vision encapsulates the, the future of the pension industry. Uh, we see ourselves as a, a PFA that is there for the workers today and that will be there for them tomorrow when they retire. So our vision is to be the foremost PFA um, in Nigeria. Okay. And our mission is to ensure that when Nigerian workers retire, they will not retire into a penalty. Yes. They will retire into abundance. Okay. And so that's in brief, um, without quoting our mission and vision statements verbatim. That's our vision and our mission. So what has been the response so far? And what has been the trust fund pensions? Uh, what have they done in activism to change all of these things that we see as a norm in you know, Nigeria? Um, the current pension scheme by design is mandatory okay. for workers both in the public and the private sectors. Um, it is the segment um, that we call um, um, the one that belongs to the informal sector. Okay. The portion that belongs to informal sector players, uh, workers in the informal sector, that we call micro pension. That is a little bit um, optional. Um, and so by law, like I said, it is mandatory. And the top tier of the pr private sector have joined. The public sector have essentially keyed in, has essentially keyed in in the public sector. And uh, the private sector also, the top tier has keyed in. Um, it is the micro uh, and medium and, and, and professionals and individuals that uh, are a little bit uh, hesitant in the terms of joining the scheme. Okay. It is also, um, to a large extent, uh, not difficult to know why they are reluctant. I mean, it's, it's, it's a matter of cash flow. Okay. At that level, um, there are cash flow constraints. Okay. They are essentially, um, you know, trying to live by the day. And so um, the savings culture is not so well developed uh, because of cash flow again. Uh, and so um, that is a sector where the industry is focused on making sure that they are mainstreamed okay. into the contributory pension scheme. Um, and so, um, PFS, Trust Fund Inclusive, okay. um, have gone out of their ways 
to ensure that um, the workings of the scheme are explained to the potential beneficiaries. We have tried to carry them along through various media by doing the kind of things that we are doing now, okay. which is public enlightenment. Yes. Um, we have printed flyers. We have gone out of our ways. We have 46 branches nationwide. And these are contact centers um, for our workers to get knowledge, get information, and of course be um, mainstreamed into the contributory pension scheme. Um, at, the, at the segment of um, the micro pension, which I mentioned, the industry has also rolled out um, a publicity scheme that are designed to inform uh, the micro uh, enterprise practitioners and workers um, on the benef benefits of uh, joining and keying into the micro pension scheme. Um, the essence is that we don't eat our tomorrow today, exactly. whether we are talking of the private or the public sector. Um, we've had stories of people who ordinarily uh, were um, financially buoyant in their active years, you know, uh, end up in absolute penury uh, later in life. And that's the problem of lack of savings culture, the problem of eating today, what you should have kept for tomorrow. Uh, and so what we are doing, enlightenment, we are demonstrating that the scheme is working. The scheme is working because um, we are paying. Um, the industry has paid uh, trillions of, uh, uh, of Naira to, to retirees along the various you know, retirement uh, pipelines, whether it's what we call program withdrawal, whether it's 25%, whether that's temporary access, uh, whether you talk about uh, annuity. And today, um, the newest, of course, is a mortgage scheme, uh, you know, which uh, is enabling uh, active working, the active working population of our customer base to access part of their um, RSA balance. RSA is retirement savings account balance, the purpose of paying for, for, for mortgage. And so the industry trust fund, of course, at the forefront is doing um, so much to ensure that um, Nigerian workers know about the benefits of the scheme. And for those of them who, uh, like I said, have the options to key in, that they see the need and the advantage of keying in. Can we know uh, some of the strategies that you have employed to grow and to sustain the uh, trust fund pensions? Well, the value that we propose to our customers um, are three point. Um, one, that we will give them competitive returns on their savings uh, returns. Two, that they will not sweat to access their pension. And then uh, three, that will give them information uh, which will enable them to take decisions uh, on, their, on their savings. Because these are fundamental right now. And so this, the, the, the value we propose, because it's about value proposition, which they have bought, are anchored on these three uh, you know, uh, uh, trajectories. And um, they have bought it to us. And we, like I said initially, are the workers' uh, PFA. And so um, where we are today in terms of AUM um, is a combination of uh, our investment strategy and, of course, contributions uh, made by you know, our contributors. That is what has uh, brought us here. We also have robust um, information technology management system. Um, we also, of course, have internal processes 
that are primed and working. Uh, it's a, so it's a combination of these factors um, that has uh, taken us to where we are uh, today. And um, we are just beginning, uh, as a matter of fact, we are just beginning. In the community that we serve, which is a Nigerian community, as a matter of fact, um, has benefited from our success okay. in various ways. Um, uh, we have partnered with uh, the road safety, uh, you know, in various ways, and for a very long time, you know, um, we have also partnered uh, with uh, an organization called Zumuta Mata. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Zumuta. I mean, is uh, our, our our partners. Okay. Uh, we've tried to support them uh, in various ways. Um, we also have supported the police and the, um, the VIO, uh, you know, in, in times past. And uh, this, uh, our community relations uh, um, outreach, um, which we have perfected um, over time. Yes. And this uh, we will continue to do and even expand okay. as, um, as we, 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 we get resources. You know, um, and so we see ourselves embedded in the community that we serve. And um, we will, like I said, you know, continue to grow this partnership. Um, if you know us, if you know our foundation, you know that we have social partners. The Nigerian Level Congress and the Terrino Congress are all shareholders. Uh, in trust fund pension. And in various ways, we also um, try and sponsor some of the activities wherever they call upon us. And uh, so uh, we have various means of reaching out uh, to the public, not only through our direct intervention with the public, but also to our social partners. Thank you so much. Now let's talk about the future. Because now what are some of the priorities you know, some of the strategic priorities and goals for the future does Trust Fund Pension have in terms of business growth and social impact? Thank you very much. Um, two years ago, as 2022, we launched uh, a five-year strategy plan okay. uh, for the company uh, because we had to step back to reappraise our vision, our mission, um, and where we are. Um, we took an um, environmental scan of the, of the investment climate, we, of the political climate, and we, of, of course, took into consideration our internal resources. And we came up with a new strategy plan. Now, uh, that strategy plan will run to 2025. Um, and we are agreed. Um, management board and uh, shareholders that we will, um, by the end of that strategy plan, have an AUM in the region of about 1.5 trillion. Um, and so we are focused on that. Now, having set that goal, uh, we've prepared every other ground to lead us uh, to that point. Because whenever you have a strategy plan, mm -hmm. every activity must, um, you know, first point in that direction. Yes. And so what that, what does that mean for us? It means that we needed, we needed to, and we are uh, restructuring our operations internally. Mm -hmm. um, we are becoming more efficient in terms of how we do our business. We are also, um, more customer focused because nothing will happen if our customers are not happy. And so we are focused on uh, making our customers happy. Um, the onset of what we call transfer uh, of uh, RSAs, yes. what we call RSA portability in the industry, was a game changer for the industry. And therefore, we needed to recalibrate. Uh, what we do uh, to ensure that our customers 
don't uh, divorce and that we are able to attract uh, new customers. And so we are priming our internal operations, becoming more efficient, becoming more customer focused. We are also retooling in terms of our um, IT. Okay. Um, because efficiency is driven by IT. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are looking at resources, personnel, um, tools for work, and of course, uh, we are also trying to do everything we can to be more out there in the public space. Uh, because uh, we've not been very bullish in the time past about uh, engaging the media. Uh, and so this kind of opportunity that you're affording us now is part of um, our next level. Uh, so these are things we are putting in place in order to focus and arrive at the destination we have purposed uh, for ourselves. So yes, before we head out finally, for everyone who will be watching this clip and will be having access to this interview, would you advise the average, average Nigerian who is still struggling with saving? Let me quote my own father. My father told me that uh, if you can't save from one pound, mm. you cannot save from 100 pounds. Um, and therefore, what that means, uh, if paraphrased, is that no saving is too small. Um, so, um, one will always find reason why you cannot save. You know, um, there's always a reason why you should spend today. Yes. Um, but uh, there's an adage that, that says that um, you, you must leave some yam in the barn even if you are hungry because of tomorrow. And, and therefore, for every person who is working today, you cannot eat your tomorrow today. You must find reason to serve because tomorrow is important. So I urge um, everybody that's working today to, to believe that you will not work forever. It's, it's an imperative. And uh, if, if, you, if, you have, if you have never seen a retiree, and then one day you look at yourself because one day you are looking at a retiree. Mm -hmm. So all those things you do today you may not be able to do them again tomorrow. And uh, that is when what you did today will haunt, will haunt you. And therefore, I will urge every uh, Nigerian who is working today, you don't have to have PhD in financial literacy for you to know that you need to put something uh, aside for tomorrow. So I urge every person that's working today to ensure that no matter how small, you put away something for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is important. Well, thank you so much for affording us the opportunity and no for problem. granting us this interview. And yes, we have been hanging out with Mr. Uche Ihechere, and he is the MD CEO of Trust Fund Pensions Limited.